This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Shalom Vracha. This is me, Dror Moshe Kasuto, again with you. Happy to share um, this wisdom with you. Very happy to share it with you. Biblical breakdown, Bezrat Hashem, with the help of heaven. Vayomer Elohim, and the Creator said, Yikavu hamayim mitachat hashamayim el makom echad. That all the water that are under the sky will um, come, will get to one place. And the land will be seen, and because the Creator said it, so it took place. So we realized that the Creator created the world. And we learned that he separated the divine and higher and above water from the feminine water, from the water that um, are physical or the spiritual water that are our souls, like we explained in the last verses that we learned last time. And now the Creator, after separating the water, from their source in heaven decided to bring them all to one place. So water are humble, they're catching the shape of the vessel, they're going down into the cracks and they're finding their way. And the Creator just make, made a valley, he created the space, a vessel, for all the water to get into that place. And those are the oceans, that's the large sea, and all the lakes and the springs and, and the rivers. And when the Creator done that, so the water were not covering um, the earth anymore completely. And then, um, and since that day and on, the land was seen. And the Creator called the land Earth. You see that the word Eretz, that is land, and the word Earth in English sounds the same. Um, because many of the languages um, it's very clear for the one that listens to them that they have roots in the ancient language, or the holy language. We will see that in the future while learning about the Babylon um, tower that had been built by Nimrod and his people that over there the Creator divided the people to, to languages but one moment before of that, so all the land were people um, talking only in one language. In, in the wide world, people were talking only in the ancient language of Hebrew. But since that situation took place with the Babylon um, Tower um, that had been destroyed finally by, by Hashem, so then languages started to be um, to take place to exist in the world but before that everyone including hashem the creator of the world revealed his wisdom to us in that ancient language that the bible is written in the ancient language of the hebrews and to that source of water, to that place that was holding the water, the Creator called Yamim. Yamim is the seas, all the, all the sea. All the water sources are being called the sea, the seas. Vayar Elohim Kitov, and then the Creator saw that it was good. So like I explained to you in our last um, learning, um, biblical learning, biblical learning that in the second day the creator have not completed his creation therefore he never said that the second day was good 
but when he completed the creation of water in the third day, so even that the third day has not finished yet, he already said once that it's good, and now the Creator is passing to the next stage of creation of the third day. Vayomer Elohim, Tadshe Haaretz Deshe, that there will be grass, Hashem the Creator said, that there will be grass on the land. Deshe Esev, weed, grass, all kinds of leaves. Deshe Esev Mazri Azera, that they have seeds inside of them. Etzpri, and also tree, that it is a fruit. This is something very deep and very meaningful, what it's written over here. The Creator said, Etz pri, tree, fruit, tree of fruits, but it's not only tree that makes fruits, because the next part of that verse, the Creator is saying to us, the Bible reveals the Creator's will and saying to us, Etz pri, a fruit tree, that makes fruits in its kinds, like mandarins, apples, whatever. But two things are written on those trees. One is that it's a fruit tree. And the second thing is that the tree makes fruits. So it's not the same. The real intention of the Creator was that the tree itself will have the flavor of the fruit. That was the real intention of the Creator. Now, the earth, when it brought out the trees, it didn't follow the Creator's desire, the Creator's, Creator's will. It didn't listen to Him. It didn't do what the Creator commanded. And there, that's why, therefore, the trees today are not tasty, are not edible, you not eat the trunk, you don't eat the branches. But the Creator's will was to create the tree that it will be a fruit, that it will be edible and will have the same taste of its fruits. And Rashi is talking about that. It's a... Um, so, this is a wonderful thing, and why is it important? Mainly because in the future to come, when the redemption will, will take place completely, and the real true kindness of the Creator will be revealed and not be blocked anymore under the limitations of physicality, so all the things will come back to their source, to their roots, to the heavenly will of the Creator. So also the trees themselves will become fruit trees that you will be able to enjoy their branches as well. So inside those trees, Asher Zarobo, the seeds will be hidden, will be held inside of it. Al Haaretz, on the ground, Vayichem. Everything that the Creator said, so be it. It happened exactly like He said. So the land had that option, that power inside of it, to bring out grass, um, all kinds of, of leaves of grass, Mazriya Zera, that can seed, that can be seed, Lemineu, in different kinds, Ve'etz or Sepri, and a tree that makes fruits, you see? So the result is not like the will of heaven. The Creator said, I want Etz Pri, a tree, fruit, makes fruits. But the result, what it really took place in the end, was only ve'etz o sepri. The tree makes fruits. It's not a fruit tree. It's not a tree that is a fruit as well, that is a fruit that is edible. Just a regular tree like we know that makes, that brings out fruits. 
אשר זרעו בו למינהו, that its seeds are hidden inside of it, וירא אלוהים כי טוב, and the Creator saw that it's good, so here we see on the third day, the second time that it's written, it's good, because the Creator finished and completed the creation of the third day. He completed the creation of the second day with the water, created the seas, the rivers, and the springs of water, and now the third part, all the vegetables and trees and grass. And then it was evening, and then it was morning, third day. Something very um, important and interesting about the Jewish calendar, about the real calendar, that based on the Bible, that the morning um, is not the beginning of the day. We know that in the, um, in the Jewish calendar, Shabbat, the seventh day, starts at Friday evening, because every day starts in the evening. Vayi Erev, it was evening, and then the morning came, and that's one day. So the day starts at evening, and finish in sunset of the next day, and not at midnight, and like, like the world changing their dates every night at 12. It was the first, now at 12 o'clock it becomes the second. It was 31st, and now at 12 o'clock it becomes at 1. It becomes a new day, a new, a new day, a new year, a new imagination. It doesn't work like that. The real um, changes of the dates are taking place like the Creator set them, and He set them and wrote it in the Bible, that when it's evening, the day starts. And when the day finish and been complete, it's in the sunset of the next day. And over there, it's one day. So the first day of Sunday starts in the end of Saturday, in Saturday's evening, when the stars coming out to the world, that's the beginning of the day. And when the sun sets in the west, there is the end of the second day. Vayomer Elohim, and the Creator said, Yehi me'orot birkia shamayim. There are going to be lights in the sky, in, in, hanged above our heads. Lehavdil ben hayom uven halayla. To separate, to make a difference between the day and the night. So you see that now, after the creation of light and darkness that took place in the beginning, in the first day, that the Creator created the light and said that it's good, but still there was no stars, there was no sun, no moon. Only now in the fourth day, the Creator is hanging the sun and hanging the moon and hanging the stars. The light does not really depend in the sun. Even though that if you will ask the science and you're going to ask the people, they will tell you that the sun is a ball of fire and the light is coming out of the sun. All of that is the power of imagination of people that fell into that trap of physicality. They cannot see beyond the curtains that are blocking the truth from us, but we should look deep inside of ourselves and reconnect ourselves to the inner truth that can be recognized that there is a real Creator, and He created heaven and earth, and He created all the particles, all the creations, and He hanged the sun, and He hanged the moon in the sky and the stars, and all of them are serving Him. All of them are committed to Him. All of them are doing what He commanded them to do. He created the light first and created the darkness 
second and after a few days in the fourth day he decided to put lights in the sky to make differences between the day and the night and they will be the signs for us to know when will be our days and when will be our holy days and when will be years that we will have our, our, our time, that we'll have watches, that we will know exactly how to set the time, set the times based on the movements of the stars in the sky. And they will be the lights in the sky to illuminate the earth to illuminate on earth and, and that's what happened and so be it and that's what that happened. So now the Creator hanged, made the light to be to come out through those stars through the lights. Vayas Elohim and the Creator made et Shnehameorot Hagdolim the two large lights et Hamaor Hagadol Lemshelatayom the larger one to rule the day, that's the sun, and the smaller one, to rule at night, and the stars, the Creator put them in the sky to illuminate the earth, and to rule and control the day and the nights, and to make the separation between the light and darkness clear to people, to us. And the Creator saw that it's good. It was evening and then morning completed the fourth day. When it's written that the stars, that the sun and the moon and the stars are controlling, supervising um, on the on Earth, the days and the nights. It's revealing this piece of knowledge is revealing to us a very deep secret, a very deep understanding of how the world system works. That really the Creator. He runs the will, all the wills of heaven, all the wills of the sky. Everything is running, corresponding to His will. But He created a system that He will work through. He's using the stars, the sun at the day and the moon at night to lead the world. Now, there's a map over there in the sky and the real righteous ones are able to see in the stars exactly what is the will of heaven now there are also many people that claims to have that wisdom and pretending to know what's written in that map in the map of the sky but many of those people are liars and phonies so it's much better not to go and seek for answers in the sky we received from heaven a real deep advice and that advice is telling us exactly how we will find our way in this world if we want to learn and to come closer to the truth and to heaven so how a person will know his way at night, how the person will find his way when he doesn't know the, the, the lanes, the routes. <coughs> so the verse is saying, The faith is in the nights. If you will have faith, you will find your way also at nights. Also in those hours that you don't know what to do, that you don't have a clue which way to choose, which path to walk in. If you will have faith, means if you will believe that the Creator is with you and He's running the show and He's above the creation, 
you will talk to him, you will pray to him, you will ask for his advice and for his help, and he will answer your prayers. When your prayer is successful, you talk to the Creator like you talk to your best friend. You open your heart and you're just being sincere and honest and truthful. And you just ask all your needs and you consult on all your issues. And you're opening and spreading all your doubts, all your questions. And you speak them out from your mouth like you speak to your best friend. If you need to apologize for something, you apologize yeah, like you would apologize to your best friend. If you want to say thank you, you're going to express your gratitude like you would express your gratitude to your best friend. If you need to ask for help, you're going to ask for help like you would ask it from someone that you appreciate his friendship, someone that you know that you can count on, that he will be there, stand by your side. May the Creator bless us all and open our eyes and purify our hearts to serve Him with a happy heart and a wishing soul. Amen. Can you hear song? Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.